and frustrated with my son's school for teaching my autistic, vulnerable child that gender identity ideology is fact. My son was 14 years old um, when he started to become more involved online. Um, he was beginning to try cosplay. He was obsessed with anime. I'd always always spoken to him because he he is he's high functioning but quite autistic. So socially, he found it very very hard to make friends, and he was quite bullied in real life all the way through school for being kind of quirky and odd but very bright. I think he had experienced what they call emasculation where he wasn't an alpha male, you know, he wasn't good at sports, he was quite clumsy. He whatsapped me from, from upstairs and said, Mum, I feel like I'm a girl in a boy's body. And I said, that's absolutely fine, darling. I had absolutely no idea what was just about to happen. He then started to fall into this deep online world where he was talking to groomers and he didn't understand that those people weren't his family and they were doing disgusting things like sending him pics. So I, you know, I, I, I asked to see his phone and I looked at his phone and I could see that some very, very strange groups of people were actually talking to him sexually, you know, they were asking him very personal questions. One of them actually sent a, a very revealing picture of his And it seemed to be, to be evident that, you know, these people weren't teenagers, they were older, presumably paedophiles, preying on a, on a young child. But he was dressing up for these people. Um, and it was becoming more sexualized. You know, he did want to kind of begin the cosplay and start dressing up as girls, as anime girls. This was very much to do with what the groomers were um, requesting him to do. They were kind of very gently pulling him in and manipulating him and, you know, asking him how he was and um, you know, go into bed and darling and lovely and, you know, want to give you cuddles and I want you to come and sit on my lap and... Um, at the same time, my son, you know, as I said, he'd messaged from upstairs to say that he was... he felt wrong in his body. Uh, I then asked if the school could talk to him, maybe the school nurse could talk to him about puberty. And then before... I know it, he's come through the front door with all this paperwork, you know, clipped together a piece of paper, one from um, the NHS, which was to do with an organisation of young trans youth called Sidentity, who were explaining that it was best, you know, if, if children felt that way, it's best to, you know, start a medical process, um, to transition, um, it, it, it just, it, 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 none of it seemed evidence-based. It, it, it was very much talking about, you know, not about the feelings, but about moving quickly into changing sex almost, you know, and, and agreeing that the child was born wrong. Not only that, on the pieces of paper, the NHS, the, 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 the NHS nurse at school had almost handwritten a, a referral for him to take puberty blockers and hormones. In the information as well, it signposted my son to a trans identifying children's support group, a trans support group, where the, you know he was requested to sign up from a, from a different email to his parents so that he could do it in private behind their back. The, the website seemed, to, you know, he was bombarded every single day with about five or six emails from the Youth Digest where it seemed lots of trans-identified children were all discussing with each other 
everybody could see it. It's all sent out to everyone. And they were discussing um, access to private back streets, off-label medication, where was the best place to get the hormones, um, discussing a, a clinic called Gender GP, which, which had Helen Weberly, a nurse that once I researched it, had been struck off for giving um, an under 18 year old hormones. They had no endocrinologist support. They were directing people to various surgeries. And, and the kids were kind of racing to get onto puberty blockers. And, you know, are you on, e are you on estrogen yet? Are you on testosterone yet? And I've, I've been on it three months. You know, they're all racing to do this. And it just seemed really odd, really. Um, the trans identified male moderators were encouraging the children to go off to discord to talk in groups there as well which again that for me that safeguarding issues there with with encouraging them and my child had already been groomed encouraging them into groups where they were talking with other people you, you had no idea who they were the alarm bells were ringing at this point he very much saw things in black and white and he very much because he was bullied he was very much looking for a solution, um, you know, to, to make him friends with people. One of the slides that the school gave me was actually a story about a girl called Tina May. And the, on the PowerPoint, it said that, you know, she'd always struggled. She felt like she was the odd one out. But then she was, then she found out about gender identity. And once she transitioned, the bullying stopped. Now, if you're showing slides like that to autistic children like my son, they think in black and white. So if the child sees that that is an option, so my son actually, not long after, had a conversation with me about wanting female chromosomes. And I, I you know, I'm gen gently talking to him about, you know, I'm. I'm really sorry, darling, but you can't actually physically have female chromosomes, ever. He then came upstairs and he'd cut his arm on the top and he said, Mum, I've fallen over and I hit the counter. And I said, no, darling, you haven't fallen over. You, you've clearly cut that, so let's go and patch you up. I don't think it's a very good idea that they push these vulnerable children together in this group where they can all ruminate together and obsess about this information that the NHS and the schools are giving them on this gen notion of gender identity, I don't think it's very healthy for them to just be getting one side of this story. They're teaching magical rainbow glitter unicorns. They're not actually teaching the facts about what this gender identity is. They're not teaching the facts about what these operations entail and the fact that these are off-label, off-license drugs being given to kids, like Lupron was given to prisoners and now we're giving it to children as puberty blockers. It seems we're just experimenting on this generation of children and colluding, pushing out the parents. So the reason I'm wearing this mask is because I don't feel safe. I, I feel like I've been treated, I've been ostracised, there's been a wedge driven between us. I don't want him to think I'm doing anything that pushes us even further away. He's, he's estranged, so he's living somewhere else, but I want him to know the door is always open for him.